Good morning from the city of Mendoza. I have been here now for two weeks. I'm actually leaving tomorrow, but after two weeks being here, I have some pretty good suggestions about things to do in the city, especially if you don't have a car. So one good thing to note is that Mendoza is actually very small. It is much smaller than Buenos Aires and it is a very walkable city. They don't have a soup day, but they do have many buses. And the good thing about that is you can use the exact same sube card on the buses in Mendoza as you can in Buenos Aires. Okay, so let's get right into it. The first thing is that in Mendoza, there are five main plazas and almost all of them are really nice, but they're definitely all worth a visit to have a look. The first plaza is the main plaza in the center of Mendoza. It's called Plaza Independencia, and that is where I'm at right now. So Plaza Independencia is at the center, and then one block out from each corner of this plaza is another plaza. So it's basically Independencia in the middle, and then four all around, making like a big square. So we've got Plaza España, Plaza Italia, Plaza Chile, and Plaza San Martín. Plaza de Independencia is famous for the fountains that are just right behind me. In the evenings at around 8.30 to 9, they have a fountain show. And I guess it lasts around an hour, slightly more, but it's a big fancy show with lights, playing to music, modern music, and it's a really common thing to come and see. The other thing about Plaza Independencia is that sometimes in the evenings and on the weekends, there are market stalls around the edge of the plaza. And as you can see, it's just a super popular plaza to hang out in. It's really peaceful, it's really relaxing. There are a ton of benches, there's a lot of shade, people walking their babies. Of the remaining plazas, Plaza Chile is probably the least taken care of. And if you have to select one to not see, that's probably the one you could leave out. There is a fountain in the center, but there's no water. There's some statues dedicated in honor to Chile. There are people hanging out, walking dogs, but of all of the other plazas, it's probably the least nice one. So next is the Plaza Italia. Plaza Italia actually just got a brand new fountain in the middle dedicated to Dante Alighieri. So it has Dante, it has Beatrice. There are also some statues in honor of Italy. Then we have Plaza España, which is aptly named. The plaza looks like it was taken right out of Sevilla. There's tiled benches, there's fountains, there's statues, and everything with a bit of that blue tiled color. If you go to Plaza España, you'll know what I mean. And the last plaza is Plaza San Martín, which is where I am now. You can tell it's San Martin because it has this massive statue of San Martin right in the center. It's November right now, which is such a nice time to be here because there are jacaranda trees blooming all around this plaza and I love it. This plaza, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely one of the most beautiful because of the blooming trees. Just across the street from Plaza San Martin is the Museo de Arte Contemporáneo, o Espacio de Arte Contemporáneo. I actually haven't been inside because every time I go, it's closed. I think they're changing exhibitions right now. But if you look at the reviews on Google, everybody loves it, and it's something that everyone recommends. Come to Mendoza. So if you do have a chance, I definitely recommend trying to go to that museum. Unfortunately, I can't report first-hand experience. So another one of the well-known museums in Mendoza is called Museo del Área Fundacional. It's really hard for me to remember how to say that. In most main cities in Argentina, there's a cabildo, which was built by the Spanish and used to be used as the government building. Now in most cities like Buenos Aires, Salta, Córdoba, it's just a museum. But in Mendoza, it's a little bit more unique because in 1861, there was an earthquake here that basically destroyed the entire city, the Cabildo included. So everything was destroyed and when Mendoza rebuilt the city, they moved the city over a bit and they built it on a grid system, which is why we have these five plazas that was very much planned out. But this museum shows the history of Mendoza before the earthquake, after the earthquake, and everything in between. So in the Área Fundacional, you can see the foundation of the old Cabildo. The Cabildo is no longer standing, but you can see the foundation of it. It's all in Spanish, so if you don't speak Spanish, then just go and enjoy what you can see. And if you do speak Spanish, then great, because then you'll actually be able to learn a little bit more about the history. And not far from that space is the remains of an old church as well. You can see it's very much crumbling down, but 
it was there before the earthquake so you can see what remains. So one of the coolest museums that I went to is just this one behind me, MMAMM, -M -M, Museo Moderno de Arte. I don't know what all the M's are for, but it's a very cool museum. It's completely free. It's just here in the center of Plaza Independencia. Right in the middle, there's stairs that go down on both sides, so it's kind of underground, right underneath where that Mendoza sign is. But it's super cool. It's contemporary art, there's exhibits, installations. I definitely recommend it. Just behind me is the Museo de Pasado Cujano, and supposedly, it's a very good museum. I've read the reviews, I've seen people talking about it. It has the history of Mendoza. Apparently it was also the house of two previous governors of Mendoza. Only problem is every time I've come by, it's been closed, including today. So if you can come, I suggest giving it a shot. It seems interesting. It's about a thousand pesos, so around $3, $3.50. So it's worth it if you are able to find it open. So far I have not, but good luck. Taking a pause on things to do, just for a moment, I wanna share some of the things that I have observed here in Mendoza as well. For one, it seems like everyone smokes. Now, I know a lot of people in Buenos Aires smoke as well, but it really stands out here in Mendoza. It's like everyone smokes all the time. You can never escape it. People are smoking, walking down the street, at cafes, everything. There's smoke everywhere. I don't know why that is. If you're Argentinian, tell me why it seems like more Mendocinos smoke than Porteños. The other thing that I wanted to say, if you're a foreigner, is that there are Western unions everywhere. It is not something that you need to worry about here. This is a city. There are tons of Western unions here in Mendoza, just like there are in Buenos Aires. The last thing I wanted to mention is that Mendoza actually feels quite a bit more affordable than Buenos Aires. I noticed that prices at restaurants are slightly lower brunch things are less, something that might be 2,000 pesos in Buenos Aires is 1,500 here. That goes for cost of living things as well. From the people that I've talked to and I've asked what they pay for rent, the, the rent price is significantly lower. For example, what you might get in Buenos Aires for 500 or $600 per month, you can get the same thing, if not more, here in Mendoza for like 150, 200 max. My friend told me that for what I was paying in Buenos Aires, with that same amount of money here in Mendoza, I can get like a massive space. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of moving to Argentina that maybe you hadn't considered Mendoza, but if you really wanna save money, then come to Mendoza because you'll find much more affordable rents. And if you're worried about Mendoza being a smaller town and making friends, because honestly in Buenos Aires, there are so many foreigners, it's a lot easier to make friends. But from just the two weeks that I've been in Mendoza, I have found the people to be super friendly. There are different meetup groups, language groups, improv groups. There's a lot of things going on and the people are really open-minded and have like really welcomed me just the couple times that I've met them. So I definitely think it's possible to build a community here in Mendoza. To be honest, if I ever come back to Argentina to live, I will be living in Mendoza and not Buenos Aires and not Córdoba, but Mendoza. Mendoza has really great parks as well. There's one park called Parque Central. It's not exactly super central into the city now, but before the earthquake, before Mendoza had an earthquake, it was more center, but it's still called Parque Central. It is a massive park with a little lake, fountains, tons of exercise equipment, jungle gym for children. So if you wanna go somewhere and relax, bring a book, have a picnic, it's a fantastic space. Another great park is Parque San Martin. It's at the very west side of the city. It is a massive park. The front gates are super famous. They also have a ton of paths, a rose garden. There's a lake in the center that you can walk around. It's huge, like bigger than it even looks on the map. If you keep going, up kind of on the side on the right side of the park and you keep following the road to the very top there's a place called Cerro de la Gloria. It's a good hike. It's less nature than I had hoped because a lot of the walk is along the road but once you get to the top you have a great view of Mendoza and at the very top there's a massive statue of San Martin and his 
army from the Andes, his Andean army. So you can either drive there if you have a car, take a taxi, it's not that far. It's also a stop that's on the Mendoza City bus tour. So if you do do the Mendoza City bus tour, you'll see it there. Otherwise you can walk. It took me about one hour, actually a little more, probably an hour and a half to get there and then just under an hour to come back. So maybe there's not a Palermo in Mendoza, but there are tons of cool streets with restaurants, cafes, places to go out. One of those streets is Juan B. Justo. It's about seven or eight blocks north of Aristides, which I'll mention in a minute. But there's a lot of cafes and restaurants. Don't go on a Sunday because nothing will be open. Everything's dead, so don't waste your time. But if you go on the weekend, there's gonna be a lot of things open and it's actually known for having more affordable prices on restaurants and things, so you might find a younger crowd there on a weekend. There's also another street called Paseo Alameda. It's not a big street, it's kind of a little strip in the middle of a street. And during the day, it's pretty dead. And I actually haven't been at night, but I've heard from multiple people that that's a great place to go at night because there's a ton of restaurants, ton of different places for drinking and things like that. Right now, I'm walking on Sarmiento Street and it's a peatonal street, meaning there's no cars, it's only foot traffic. It's about three blocks long and it's just filled with restaurants, cafes, it's pretty quiet, especially in the morning. I've actually enjoyed coming here a couple times and having breakfast at a couple of the different cafes. I haven't been here at night. I imagine things are going on, but it's just filled with cafes and it's really quiet. So definitely take a stroll through Sarmiento Street. Another place that I think is worth checking out is the Mercado Central. It's just a little bit north of the main city center here. It's not quite as big as, for example, Mercado Norte in Córdoba, and it's definitely smaller than some markets in Buenos Aires. But it's worth checking it out because it has the fiambres, like the, the meats and the cheese cuts. It's just an interesting experience to walk through. There are a few places to have lunch in there. If you are looking for a fantastic cocktails and delicious tapas, I have the exact place to tell you, which is La Central Bermuteria. It was recommended to me by a friend and I went and then I went again because it was so good. The cocktails are delicious and the food and the tapas were so good as well. But not only that, the people working there were incredibly kind. Like they all treated you like their long lost friend, like they knew you and they waved at you and smiled at you. And it was just a really pleasant experience. So if you're in Mendoza, do yourself a favor and go to La Central. Right now I'm walking on Avenida Aristides, which is easily the busiest street in all of Mendoza. On both sides, it's lined with cafes and restaurants and it never stops. In the day, it's pretty relaxed, there's a lot of music, but at night it is full on. So if you like partying, if you like going out, or if you just like being around crowds, definitely come to this street. If you like sleeping, however, I would not recommend staying on this street because I made that mistake. I have my Airbnb right on the street above a kiosco that plays reggaeton about 22 out of 24 hours of the day. So good to come out, bad to sleep. So all of that is within the city of Mendoza, but there are things that you can do outside of Mendoza, which also don't require a car, just slightly more effort, but really not that much effort at all. The first thing is the Cacheuta thermal baths. There's two options. You can go to the hotel spot, which you should definitely book way in advance because it books up fast, or the thermal water park which is open to the public and you don't necessarily need reservations for that because the capacity is over 2,000 people. But it's only about one hour outside of Mendoza. You can easily take the city bus from there. Round trip was like $1 total, so it's super affordable. So because I made the decision last minute, I didn't go to the like nicer spa, I went to the water park version. I was a little bit worried thinking it might be kind of gimmicky and like full of kids, but I went on a Monday and yeah, there were kids and stuff, but it was super relaxing still. There's several layers to it. So it's really relaxing and the views are incredible. It's thermal in the middle of nature. So I definitely recommend doing that. To get there, you just have to go to the Andes Mar bus company in the terminal. I recommend buying tickets in advance just in case so you're not stressed out on the day getting both tickets 
and trying to make it before the bus gets there. And of course, I can't mention Mendoza without mentioning the wine because that's what this region is the most famous for. There are a couple regions outside of Mendoza, uh, Lujan de Cujo and Maipu, both which have a ton of bodegas and wineries and vineyards there. I went to the one in Maipu because it's the easiest to get to. There's a train leaving right from the center of Mendoza going south and it's only 30 minutes. You can use the same Sube card as in Buenos Aires. When you're there, there's a few options. I did something called Wine and Ride. There's a bicycle company like two minutes from the bus stop. You go there, you can do an already pre-programmed trip or you can just rent the bike and go to whichever bodegas you want. But it's a fantastic way to get out and see the area and ride a bike, it's really nice. The other thing that you can do is book a wine tour. That way someone else is driving you around, you don't have to worry about being on a bike in the hot sun or anything happening, and you'll be with a group of people so you'll have a chance to get to know people. If I were to do it again, I would probably either just rent the bike and go to whatever bo bodegas I want rather than pre-book, or I would do it in a group so that I have a chance to meet people while I'm trying all the wine rather than just get kind of drunk all by myself. I have really liked being in Mendoza the past few weeks. I wanted to escape the kind of chaos and craziness of Buenos Aires, La Ciudad de Furia, and I really found that here in Mendoza. It's a really chill city, a really relaxed city, so I've really enjoyed the slower pace of life here, a lot less car honks. So if you're in Argentina and you're looking for something a little bit more relaxed than Buenos Aires, I highly recommend spending some time in Mendoza. And if those Cachuta thermal baths sound good to you, I would recommend, well, booking ahead at the hotel spa if you want something more relaxing, or you can see my experience going to the water park if you just click on this video here. Why not?